Hello everyone. Let's discuss how we can score a 10 on 10 on an evaluative question from paper three A-level psychology. If I read the question, the question over here says, evaluate the psychological explanations that is cognitive, behavioral, and psychodynamic of obsessive compulsive disorders, including a discussion of individual and situational explanations. Now, a few things that I'd want you all to keep in mind before you start, before we start with this discussion. To begin with, before this evaluative question, you get a descriptive question on the very same topic, right? We get a descriptive question on the very same topic. If you have a closer look at this, this is exactly the same as the evaluative question. The descriptive question is of six marks. The evaluative question is of 10 marks. When you are to describe something, when you're expected, or when you get a question that asks you to describe something, you are expected to provide a summary of the topic ensuring that you are mentioning our essentials. However, when you're asked to evaluate, you are, there are many students, I've seen them using content from description in evaluation, right? So avoid doing that, right? Description, describe means describe and evaluate means evaluate. Now, before we uh, move further, let me uh, remind you of one more thing. Now, you would always get, like I said, you'd always get an evaluative question on a topic that you have already been asked to describe. Now, what is it that we get these descriptive questions on? If you have a look at the syllabus, if you open the syllabus, you'd see that your syllabus, let's just say this question that I have in front of me is from clinical psychology. You'd see different bullets there, right? This is what I mean when I use the word bullets, right? So if I talk about the current syllabus, for clinical psychology, you have 30 bullets and for health psychology, you have 36 bullets, right? Now, for on, on, on every bullet, right? Every bullet is a potential descriptive question. Every bullet is a potential descriptive question. And a potential descriptive question means there's a possibility that you could get an evaluative question on the same as well, right? Now, this, uh, this, 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 uh, what you see on the screen right now is a screenshot from the syllabus. You'd see that recently the examiners, they have added this line where they say relevant issues and debates and methodology for this topic include. Now, relevant issues and debates and methodology for this topic include when they say, when the examiner uses the word include, that means you aren't just restricted or you aren't just uh, asked to use these points for uh evaluation i mean you could use them however there's always a pop there's always an, an option there's always a possibility that you use any other point too this is the word this is what the word include means which i'm sure all of you would know uh, many of you might have not taken this word seriously but yeah so relevant issues and debates and methodology for this topic this topic that is this section they include individual and situational explanations nature versus nurture reductionism versus holism determinism versus free will ideographic versus nomothetic approach now have a look at what has been highlighted over here in yellow if we go back to the question that we are to discuss today the question over here says evaluate the psychological explanation that is cognitive behavioral and psychodynamic of obsessive compulsive disorder including a discussion of individual and situational explanations now with this part where the question reads including a discussion of this is referred to as the named issue now when and again let me remind you we have this word include written over here this question is asking you to evaluate a particular topic this is the topic right from here to here this is a topic however while evaluating you're expected to use a range of different evaluative points amongst those evaluative points there's a named issue there's a specific issue or a debate that the examiner wants you to ensure that the examiner wants to ensure that you have mentioned or you have used that evaluative point right now before we proceed with this uh, discussion again i'd want us all to have a look at the generic marking scheme the generic marking scheme that is again published by the caie this is this has been picked from the paper from march 2024 through this i'd want you to keep a couple of things in mind number one Questions of this sort, questions of this nature, they are marked in terms of levels, right? So there are five different levels. Level zero is zero. Level one is when you're scoring anywhere between one to two marks. Level two is when you're scoring anything between three to four marks. Level three is when you're scoring anything between five to six marks. Level four, level four is when you're scoring anything between seven to eight marks. Level five is when you're scoring 
uh, either nine marks or 10 marks, right? So if we have a look at the criteria that the examiner has used for level five, there are four points that are to be kept in mind. Detailed evaluation or discussion of the key study or the psychological theories, research approaches, explanations and treatments or therapies, right? This is what we have to, uh, number one, the, the point that I'd want you guys to pick from here is the examiner requires detail, right? Number two, the analysis should be evident throughout, right? Throughout you writing your answer, analysis should be very clear cut, right? Number three, a good range of issues, including the named issue. Named issue is what I told you it is. Or when we're reading the evaluative question, when it says, including a discussion on tuck, 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 that is our named issue, right? The fourth one, selection of evidence is very thorough and effective. Selection of evidence, whatever points that you are selecting to include in your discussion, they should be thorough and they should be effective. They must cover both theories, concepts, if two are required, right? Now, this is again, uh, level five. These are the requirements for level five. The examiner would read your answer and the examiner would see if your answer falls into level five, you'd either be or, or you'd uh, either be awarded nine to 10 marks, nine marks or 10 marks. Does the, I, uh, the, does the answer fall into level four category, level three category, level two category, level one category, or God forbid, level zero category, right? So this is the generic or this is the typical criteria that the examiner reads. Having a look at the question again, this is the question I'm reading it for you for the third or the fourth time now, because I want you all to understand this, right? Remember, as I said, evaluative questions are from topics where you have been asked to describe and description and the description questions come from uh, come, 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 come from topics that are in bullets in our syllabus, right? Now, if you have a look again, this is cognitive, uh, evaluate the psychological explanation that is cognitive, behavioral and psychodynamic of obsessive compulsive disorder. Let me show you the, uh, the, the, the syllabus again. Have a look at this one. So all three of these, they are psychological explanations that is cognitive, behavioral and psychodynamic, right? Taking this ahead, before I even proceed with this, uh, where is this, uh, where did uh, I get this from? This is from the standard booklet that is published by Cambridge. This answer has been awarded a 10 on 10. I would want you to, uh, I would want us to discuss, I would want to discuss this with you and let you know about how this could have been improved and let you know about uh, the few things that you should keep in mind were well, amongst them. I already did mention a few and the things that you should keep yourself uh, uh, away from, right? Now to begin with a specimen answer from a high level mark, right? Now, one issue. Okay, now what is it that I tell my students? I tell my students uh, a disclaimer again. I ask my students to divide this answer into five paragraphs, right? The first paragraph, it would include introduction, this adds to the aesthetic value, right? The second, the third, and the fourth paragraph would include uh, evaluative points, right? And uh, the last paragraph I suggest, or ad I advise students to write as a conclusive, uh, or a conclusive, yeah, because conclusive paragraph or the conclusion. So introduction, evaluating named issue, evaluating any second issue, evaluating third issue, and the fifth paragraph, con uh, conclusion paragraph. Now that's what I keep on telling my students. However, if you have a look at this uh, answer that I have in front of me, this is simply divided into three paragraphs. Now, the question that rises over here is, now I explain, ask my kids to ideally write five paragraphs. This answer has three paragraphs and yet the student has scored a 10 on 10. See, what we learn from this is there is no clear cut criteria as to how many paragraphs you need to divide your answer into, right? As long as while answering this, you are analyzing thoroughly through a conclusion and you are keeping it to three paragraphs, it till, still works, right? Now evaluate the, if you, if you remember, let me take you back. So this says, uh, the third point over here says, a good range of issues include the named issue, right? A good range of issues, including the named issue. See, if you simply evaluate one point, that would not be a range, right? If you evaluate on the basis of two points, that might be a range, but it wouldn't really be a good range. For it to be a good range, there should be three evaluative points, right? I'm not saying at least three evaluative points. I'm saying three evaluative points, right? Because the uh, using three evaluative points makes it a good range, right? Now, taking this side, or rather, let me repeat this. 
evaluating on the basis of one thing is not a range. I'm sure you agree. Evaluating on the basis of two things is a range, but it's not a good range. For it to be a good range, it would be an evaluation on the basis of three points. Now, if you have a look at this, see, this is a limited range. So two points might be considered as a limited range. So taking this ahead, having a look at the question, the answer rather. One issue that can be applied to these explanations is the individual and situational explanation. So the named issue has directly been picked up from over here, right? So the named issue has directly been picked up here, right? Now, one issue that can be applied to these explanations is the individual and situational explanation. The behavioral explanation, okay, ideally, I tell my students to, when, when you're mentioning this particular uh, evaluative point, that you are to bring in under discussion, ideally you should be defining it as well. Now, I keep on saying that to my students. Uh, I'm sure uh, there are other uh, teachers who do the same. And that's a point that you'd read ahead when we'd be reading the comments on this particular answer. That's what the examiner has felt too. So one issue that can be applied to these explanations is the individual and situational explanation. The behavioral explanation can be seen behavioral from here. The behavioral explanation can be seen to be situational as the patient with OCD will experience anxiety due to the situation. See, what we're talking about is, see, your thorough understanding your knowledge on that particular topic is essential along with that you should very well know what individual and situational explanations are so individual explanations are in other words when we believe that an individual behaves in a particular manner because of his or her personality however when we speak about a situational explanation if i put it in a super simplistic manner the extent to which the situation a particular situation is considered to be responsible when it comes to an individual behaving in a particular manner. So putting it in a simple manner, does an individual behave the way he or she does because of his or her personality, or does the situation have anything to do with it? Now, one issue that can be applied to these explanations is the individual and situational explanation. The behavioral explanation can be seen to be situational as the patient with OCD, right? As the patient with OCD will experience anxiety due to the situation that they are in, such as seeing unclean surface. Now, look at how these, I mean, this has been used when when, when the when the students write, uh, write such as seeing unclean surfaces, you're making it clearer to the examiner that you know what you're talking about and you're not simply bluffing, right? Now, if the patient, now you're further developing it, right? If the patient with OCD avoids these situations, then their anxiety will be lower. Right. So you've made it very clear that the behavioral explanation believes that it is uh, 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 the behavioral explanation believes uh, the, the behavioral explanation could be seen as a uh, situational uh, explanation as well, because someone who has OCD feels anxious or experiences anxiety due to the situation, such as an unclean surface. Right. So if the patient with OCD avoids those situations, he or she would not experience uh, anxiety or the amount of anxiety they'd experience would be lower or lesser. However, this explanation can also be seen as individualistic. This explanation, we spoke about how it could be situational. Now we're talking about how it could also be individualistic. However, this explanation can also be seen as individualistic as each individual will be different in terms of what causes them anxiety. Let's just say we're talking about uh, we're talking about uh, patient A and we're talking about patient B. Patient A might get triggered because of one particular thing. Patient B might get triggered because of another thing. So, right, I hope you understand it so far. However, this explanation can also be seen as individualistic as each individual will be different in terms of what causes them anxiety. Now, I'm not trying to explain you this topic. I'm, I'm assuming that you already know this topic because... Like I've said it twice earlier, to do this topic, I mean, before you got to this, uh, sorry, before you got to this question, you must have answered a descriptive question, right? And for you to answer a descriptive question, that means your knowledge on that particular topic should be, I mean, no compromise on the knowledge on that particular topic, right? So uh, can also be seen as individualistic as each individual will be different in terms of what causes them anxiety. Some patients may feel anxious in dis disordered environments and others may feel anxious in unclean un environments. So for the ones who know what OCD is, obsessive compulsive disorder, I'm sure you know what obsessions are, what compulsions are. There are some people who feel anxious when things are not in order. There are other people who feel anxious when 
let's just say the surface or the environment around them, it's unclean, right? So you mentioned a point, you gave an example and you developed it, right? You made the point clear. Even when the student has not defined what individual and situation explanation is, the student very clearly showed the examiner that the student knows what he or she is talking about. Now, to conclude, see, to conclude, now the student has used that conclusion. Remember the, the analysis uh, criteria for level five uh, answers, right? This is having a look at the analysis over here, right? To conclude this, explanations offer both an individual and situational explanation and also highlights how these two explanations intersect with each other, right? So it could be a combination of both as well. Taking this ahead, the situation... Uh, where it go so the situation that causes anxiety will be different for each individual but the reaction to that situation will be the same high levels of anxiety taking it ahead the cognitive explanation see we have spoken about the behavioral explanation right now we're moving on to the cognitive explanation right they both come under the all three of them they come under the heading of psychological explanations taking this ahead uh the cognitive explanation is similar in offering both individual and situational explanations. The type of obsessions, cognitions, your thought process, the type of obsessing, uh, the type of obsessive thinking will be unique to each person, right? The type of obsessive thinking would be unique to each person. Example, their thoughts about hygiene, order, etc. right? Patient A and patient B, again, what patient A thinks about something would be different from what patient B thinks about something, right? So this could be also seen as uh, an individualistic approach. Uh, thoughts about hygiene, order, etc., and is therefore individualistic. However, stressful situations can cause all patients with OCD to feel more anxious and experience more intrusive thoughts. So we spoke about how the cognitive explanation could be individualistic, and we spoke about how the cognitive explanation could be situational as well. Now have a look at this. This is how the first named issue has been evaluated. I'm just putting this over here so that you know how much to write or what the examiner thinks uh, would be enough for someone to be scoring anywhere in the top band that is level number, top level or top, top uh, band that is level five. Taking this ahead. Now, I keep on asking my students to use block paragraphs. For the ones who do not know what a black block paragraph is, you write a paragraph and then you leave a line, right? You leave a line and then you start with the, your evaluation of the second issue. Uh, many students ask me, sir, is this a CI criteria? No, it's not. This is something a teacher wants you to do. And I have my reasons to say why I'm saying what I'm saying, because when you are using block paragraphs, you're making it clear to the examiner, to the paper checker, that this point ends over here and you're very neatly moving on to another. So block paragraphs, you get done with your paragraph, you leave a line, and then you move on to the next paragraph. So a second issue. A second issue that can be applied is the nature versus nurture debate, is the nature versus nurture debate. The behavioral explanation is on the nurture side of the debate, as all of you would know. It explains how OCD can develop through learning via negative uh, reinforcement, I'm sure. For the ones who know the behavioralist approach, you would know the extent to which the, uh, the, 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 the behavioralist approach focuses on the... Uh, role your environment or your experience plays when it comes to developing uh, uh, clinical illnesses, right? Or uh, rather say mental illnesses. So a second issue that can be applied is the nature versus nurture debate. The behavioral explanation is on the nurture side of the debate. It explains how OCD can develop through learning via negative reinforcement. The patient learns that anxiety. Now, one more thing. See, learning via negative reinforcement, your grip, your, 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 your psych 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 vocab should be strong you should know what words to use when to use them right so don't just write anything that occurred to you by the way write it when you think it would help you score better right now uh it explains how ocd can develop through learning via negative reinforcement the patient learns that anxiety can be reduced by doing compulsive behavior and so repeats this behavior every time they feel anxious. Now, for uh, again, for the ones who I'm sure everyone by now would know what OCD is and the explanations of OCD, you've all studied them, learned them. When you speak about negative reinforcement, see obsessive thoughts, reoccurring obsessive thoughts, they cause 
anxiety they make the patient anxious right so how would this be how are we dragging in or bringing in negative reinforcement over here when those obsessive thoughts they are neutralized through acts right the acts that you use or that you get involved into to be able to neutralize those reoccurring dreadful uh, uh, obsessive thoughts right you are teaching yourself or you learning that by adopting a particular behavior you would be able to reduce your anxiousness right and hence the idea of uh, negative reinforcement the patient learns that anxiety can be reduced by doing compulsive behavior and so repeats this behavior every time they feel anxious patients patients with ocd can become hyper aware of the parts of the environment that they that are linked to their ocd and this can cause anxiety to become worse over time so that patient continues to engage in compulsive behavior more and more as they have learned this will reduce their anxiety now don't you think you you might as well pause it over here and read through this in one go you'd see that not only has the student introduced nature versus nurture but without even very clearly defining what nature versus nurture is the student has explained through explanation through uh, uh through through detailed explanation they have the student has made a point that they know what they're talking about right now taking this ahead the psychodynamic explanation is similar to the behavioral explanation as it suggests that it is the early life experiences during the anal phase of development that affect whether a person develops ocd later in life if these experiences are positive and the anal phase is successful in childhood OCD will not develop. However, if there are unresolved conflicts, then OCD can develop. However, the psychodynamic explanation, in contrast to the behavioral explanation, also supports the nature side of the debate. Now, you spoke about the behavioral explanation. You spoke about how the behavioral explanation uh, claims that uh, OCD is because of nurture. Then you spoke about the psychodynamic explanation. You uh, bought in or you dragged... Uh, the nurture side of the debate over here but at the same time you are uh, very clearly letting the examiner know that even when there's a similarity between the behavioral and the psychodynamic uh, explanation in terms of what causes ocd there's a difference that exists over there as well so the psychodynamic approach also supports the nature side of the debate it suggests that it suggests that everyone will experience the psychosexual stages of development. I'm sure all of you by now would know the oral, anal, phallic, uh, latency, and genital phase. Everyone will go through the anal phase of development, which suggests that it is innate, innate or inborn. To conclude, see, the last paragraph had a conclusion too, right? Remember the criteria of being able to analyze. This paragraph, again, is providing us with a conclusion, right? What I've highlighted over here in blue. To conclude, the behavioral explanation is solely on the nature side of the debate, whereas the, the behavioral explanation is only on the, uh, that should be nurture, the behavioral explanation is solely on the nurture side of the debate, whereas the psychodynamic explanation is both uh, uh, is on both sides of the debate. So this is how we know that the CI uh, makes a boo-boo too. This is, uh, this is supposed to be nurture. To conclude, the behavioral explanation is solely on the nurture side of the debate, whereas the psychodynamic explanation supports both sides of the debate, that is nature and nurture, both. Again, a block paragraph moving on to the third evaluative point. The final evaluation point is determinism versus free will. The cognitive explanation supports both sides of the debate. It suggests that the thoughts are intrusive so the patient doesn't have control over them right the determinism versus free will remind yourself of what determinism versus free will debate is so the final evaluation point is determinism versus free will the cognition cognitive explanation supports both sides of the debate it suggests that the thoughts are intrusive so the patients doesn't have control over them in addition stressful situation which often the patient can't control can make these thoughts more frequent or of great intensity. However, the patient can learn some control over the condition by going for therapy such as exposure and response prevention. The patient has the free has the free will to expose themselves to the things they are frightened of and can then experience anxiety levels lowering. You might as well pause it over here and read through this so that you understand this as well right understanding the purpose is not to explain you the topic the purpose is to help you understand what has to be written how it has to be written to be able to score in the top level that is level five that is when you're scoring either nine marks or ten marks so 
as the anxiety levels drop, the patient will experience few obsessive thoughts. In contrast, the psychodynamic explanation offers a deterministic explanation as it suggests that the cause of OCD occurs during childhood. The anal phase of development happens when we are very young, so we would not have much control over how we treat it during this phase. To conclude, the cognitive explanation offers both a deterministic and free will explanation, suggesting that OCD cause is deterministic due to the obsessional thinking, but the patient can gain control over their disorder with the help of a therapy. The psychodynamic explanation is more deterministic as it suggests that the disorder develops in childhood where we have less free will. Now, if you have a closer look at this, initially the cognitive explanation was used and then the psychodynamic explanation was used and they were both used to, uh, they, they, these both of these explanations were used over here through this evaluative point that is determinism versus free will, right? I hope this has made sense. This is the third paragraph. You might as well pause it. And if you know your syllabus, if you know, uh, if you if you if you are prepared for this particular topic, that is uh, explanations, the uh, psychological explanations of OCD, you should be able to understand this. Now, for this answer, the student has scored a ten on ten. I don't say this; the examiner does. How a frequently asked question at this point is: How much do we need to write? Now, uh, again, uh, let me remind you, this is a 10 mark question. For this 10 mark question, you get 15 minutes in your CI and not more. You get 15 minutes in the CI to write this answer. This particular answer, this I believe is around 630, 640 words, right? Now, again, you might as well time yourself and then try writing an answer. If you are not able to write that much, then you'd have to see what you can write and how much can you write in that specific time that you, that has been allotted to you right now uh, uh let's 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 uh, move on towards uh the comments that the examiner has provided for this specific answer now to begin with this says the 10 mark question uh, the 10 mark questions are marked using a level uh, uh are marked using a levels based marking scheme now this is that generic marking scheme that i had shown to you this response achieves a mark in the top level as it addresses the requirements of this AO3 question. Now, AO3 is assessment objective three. Uh, I believe you should know by now that all the questions that you get in your CIE, they are uh, designed or those questions are according to different assessment objectives. There are three assessment objectives. We have AO1, AO2, and AO3. Assessment objective one is knowledge understanding. Assessment objective two is application. And assessment objective three is evaluation and analysis. So this evaluative question is testing uh, you on AO3. And is as it clearly says, the response achieves a mark in the top level as it addresses the requirements of this AO3 question by providing a detailed evaluation, right? Of the three psychological explanations, that is cognitive, behavioral, and psychodynamic described in part A and included a discussion of individual and situational explanation, as well as a range of other issues. So there were two other issues as well, the nature versus nurture debate and determinism versus free will. Okay. So this is catered, this is catered, so is this. Moving on. The response starts with the named issue. Uh, a frequently asked question at this point is, does it always have to start with the named issue? I mean, it's better. It's better. No one's going to penalize you if you do not, but it's always better to start it with the named issue. So the response starts with the named issue and a clear explanation of why the behavioral explanation can be considered both situational and, and individual is given. A clear explanation, bringing in clarity is your job. Do not try confusing the examiner. Many students do that. You might not feel very good when I say this, but I've seen many students that try to bluff around. They try to confuse the examiner. I think they feel that this would help them uh, score more. Trust me, it doesn't work like that. So taking this ahead, the response starts with the named issue and a clear explanation of why the behavioral explanation can be considered both situational and individual is given. Good examples back up the points made. Good examples, they, you need to give examples that back up the point that you've made. A clear comparison is made to the cognitive explanation, which provides analysis required for this question. Analysis is an essential. EO3 is evaluation and analysis. Brief but clear examples are given for the cognitive explanation. To improve, the candidate could have started the paragraph with the definition of the issue, like I mentioned earlier. Although for this candidate, it is clear from the response that they understand the meaning of situation and individual explanations. They could also be 
there could also have been another example given for the cognitive explanation but as the evaluation of the behavioral explanation is detailed this isn't necessary in order for this to be considered a full mark response now uh, this answers a couple of questions that you might have that might have occurred to you at this point too so even when you are providing a detailed uh, evaluative point for one there's a possibility i mean the examiner wouldn't again penalize you if you know do not do that for the second point one uh, number two, there are many students who'd be, who be who end up asking now for, if I speak about this question in particular, this question asks you to evaluate in terms, evaluate the psychological explanation that included behavioral, cognitive, and psychodynamic explanation. You all see the first paragraph had, uh, had, had, had bought in the behavioral explanation and had also bought in the cognitive explanation. The psychodynamic explanation was not here. So for the students who end up asking, do all three have to be present for every evaluative point? The answer is no. Even then you can end up scoring a 10 on 10. Number two, the response then continues with two more evaluation issues. The, this meets the level five requirement of a range of issues. So this again, backs what I had said a couple of minutes back. A good range means three issues being uh, uh, used for evaluation. Amongst these three, one of them would again be your named issue. Clear examples are given for both the behavioral and psychodynamic explanation as to why they support the nurture side of the debate. The response then gives a comparison which meets the requirement for analysis. So comparisons can help you. There are many students who end up asking, oh, so what is uh, uh, what, 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 what does analysis mean? So comparison could be an analysis too. Uh, for why the psychodynamic explanation could also be considered to support the nature side of the debate. There's also a conclusion at the end to summarize the issue, right? So conclusions are an essential, either you do it the way this student has done or you write an elaborate paragraph towards the end, the fifth paragraph that I was referring to. Number three, the final evaluation point of determinism versus free will is detailed and very clear with good examples given for both cognitive and psychodynamic explanation. The analysis is very good with the examples explaining why the cognitive explanation is somewhat deterministic as a patient with OCD cannot control their intrusive thoughts. It is useful that the candidates have that the candidate has bought in the therapy to show how the patient can gain some control and is a good example to explain the point that the explanation can also be considered from the free will point of view. To improve the candidate could give a definition of the debate at the beginning of the paragraph, although similar to other issues, it is clear that this candidate understands both of these definitions. So this answers another question, even when you're not defining if through your evaluation, evaluative paragraph, you're showing the examiner that you know your stuff, you know what you're talking about, you not writing a definition wouldn't really matter in that case too. So this is uh, how uh, the examiner feels a student should write to be able to score a 10 on 10. Like I said, this is around 630, 640 words. Test yourself, right? Put your pen to paper, test yourself. See how long does it take for you to write this much, right? If not, then you need to rephrase, right? However, remember, a detailed evaluation is an essential for uh, level uh, five marks, right? So there's this another answer where the examiner has given this student a five on 10. I'll just... Keep this over here. You might as well pause this and then zoom the screen and read through this. And uh, yeah, uh, I hope this has been helpful. Uh, let me reiterate, there's no format from the CAIE that advises us to write in a particular manner. There are a few prerequisites for every level, every band. And to be able to score in level five, this is again the four points that you see highlighted over here this is again uh, what the examiner expects you to do i hope this has helped thank you